you very much. It's a total offbeat from what you see, from minimal invasive to maximum invasive surgery. So my particular thing is uh, maximum invasive because ovary, unfortunately, endometrium, 75% of them come early. Ovary, anywhere in the world you go, most of them are state 3 c So I'm just going to introduce the concept of uh, IP and HIPEC, uh, where we stand. Uh, this is actually the whole background. Number one, whether you like it or not, most of the epithelial ovary and CA comes in stage 3. Most of them are stage 3 C. Second thing is, the best treatment currently what we do, we do a cytoreduction, reduction, paclitaxel, carbobasin, uh, carboplatin based uh, doublet you give. Uh, this was traditionally PFS and OS in stage 3 C. And the proportion of long term survivors is static. Most of them would recur very uh, early depending on the type of surgery you do and biological behavior is not in our hand. Uh, at this moment, we don't have markers to segregate who has a poor biological marker who may not benefit with advanced site reduction. The day it happens fantastically, it's fine. Uh, second most important thing is adding triplets, quadruplets, over and above paclitaxel carboplatin has not shown any improvement. So escalating dose also no. In CA breast, people sometimes use a dose dense for a triple negative. Such concepts is not there. Even weekly paclitaxel uh, has proved itself in a other part, but not in a upfront. So uh, do we feel that is this just where we stood? If you see last 10 years, nothing much in ORN CA changed as far as surgery is concerned. Uh, so surgery is stagnant. You know, there is no end to remove. You can remove distal pancreas, spleen, liver, multiple bowel resection. So, Basically, there is no advancement in the surgery that has happened other than the fact the surgeon, the patient withstanding ability and the anesthetic friendliness to continue with you uh, overnight. So there is no advancement. So where does we stand? So we accept that this is where humans uh, talent rests and we accept and we move on. And but there is one thing which we know. We all know that, you know, Griffith showed the amount of residual disease you leave in the abdomen decides the outcome. I don't think there is any other cancer in the body where we have the fate of a patient before you close the abdomen. Suppose you have no macroscopic disease, if the median survival is about 39, and then the moment you leave a nodule, which would be about more than 1.5, this is where it drops down. Uh, this is exactly because what Gottlieb told. We have chemo to consolidate what we do. Unfortunately, IP, HIPEC, or IV, the penetration would not be more than 1.5. So this is the philosophy which happened. That's exactly the reason. We don't know upfront PDS if you do. You do the same surgery after chemotherapy. What is the residual disease which is critical? We know that we have to achieve no microscopic disease, but GOG took anything which is less than one centimeter has a survival benefit, but that doesn't hold good if the surgery is done after chemo. Chemo has done its job by three. It has brought down to what is seen, and if you don't remove those nodules, even if they are less than one, nobody knows what is the critical value after. That's exactly the reason the results would not be same exactly if you do for a same patient subgroup. When you look at a whole, no trial may show, but this is where. So nowhere, that's why I always, I always tell my residents, before you close an abdomen in upfront CA ovary, you ask yourself consciously, put your hand on the heart, have I done the good job? Have I removed all the disease? Am I going to cure this patient? What would be the number? If you are left a disease of more than one centimeter, it's unlikely that patient is going to be cured uh, with no matter what biologicals you want to use, bevacizumab, doublets, triplets, best molecule, original molecule, Indian molecule, whatever you are going to do. Uh, it's very important. So uh, ovarian CA surgery is not something you do casually. Evening, you have to take your wife for a movie, or you have to go and pick up your friend for a dinner from airport, uh, or you have other works in outpatient, don't do that. Do it when you are free. Otherwise, please let others do who are free on that day because that's the only chance for that patient on that given day. So the whole issue of ovary is, we know that there is a peritoneal current which moves like this. Even in presumed capsule intact pelvic confined ovarian CA, there is a chance of microscopic cells in the abdomen. It will be very interesting when we were analyzing our last uh, 560 cytoreduction reduction over many years. Uh, that's the reason, you know, the current would go here we know that here falciform superior coronary junction is there, there is a stasis. That's why right diaphragm disease in all the series is more than left. On the left, we don't have those ventral attachment. Peritoneum has a lot of dorsal attachment. There's only one ventral attachment, that's the falciform ligament, nothing else. So that's exactly the reason right diaphragm disease is more. So it's very important to look at that point. Now, where does the concept of IP come? There are some important terminology we must understand. It is the EPIC. EPIC means early post-operative 
intraperitoneal normothermic chemotherapy it's very important that is epic hypex is hyperthermic so remember this normothermia early post operative it's actually told in my multidisciplinary tumor you operate by about 2 weeks you are not making a fit patient fit for me to give first dose chemo probably we are compromising my medical oncologist has a critical value you do whatever you want to do liver gallbladder abdomen anything you want to remove if you are not going to give me a patient fit for a chemo probably between second to third preferably second probably the fantastic surgeries benefit start coming down this is my medical oncology mdt concept and sometimes we keep that as an issue how many organs i'm going to remove is my patient fit nutritionally at that time so that's exactly the point early post operative normothermic see ovary is something unique not like endometrium endometrium may throw lung liver bone mats but ovary you quite often see the principal site of the disease is most of the time the abdomen most of the time you do get pleural effusions you may get liver parenchymal so something if and, and most of the uh, women of ovary see a die with miserable abdominal conditions obstruction block that's exact the best way to die would be systemic metastasis unfortunately it doesn't uh, is not the cause of death quite often in co ovary it's a peritoneal abdominal problem so which means doing something in the abdomen probably should translate into dfs pfs and os so ovarian cancer largely restricts itself and the rationale is that you remove all the microscopic disease seen to eye you have a microscopic disease you bathe that in a high concentration of chemo with a penetration and they get sterilized this is actually the concept so you have a iv chemo given through it goes to the core of the tumor not to the surface and not to these cells which are roaming individually when you add ip into the tummy and iv so both of them are taken care so this is actually the philosophy so this is the terms i told you epic hypex hyperthermia plus by direction it is called as hypex plus while doing hypex you also give iv chemo so this is hypex so there is a combination of hypex with epic so there are four five terminology i don't want to confuse you but please read about it this is the current concept so epic hypex and then by directional uh, when you do some 40 50 hypex and you see patients are going home you are not killing your patient then the medical oncologist will push you for by directional after doing 50 uh, hypex then we voluntarily moved into bidirectional but i don't recommend it for you to do first you must be very sure if you can't benefit your patient you should not harm them so it's in a given setup you do so you can see that when you give cisplatin when you give cisplatin iv plasma and peritoneal concentration you know when you give, cisplatin has got a very short molecule 20 is to 1 so if you put it into the peritoneal cavity good amount of concentration also goes to blood that's why cisplatin in ip regimes iv is not used ip is enough but you look back the carboplatin and then doxorubicin paclitaxel paclitaxel is a bigger molecule it stays in peritoneal cavity for long time thousand time peritoneal is only one that's why peritoneal i taxol has to be given both ip and iv so this is the logic what has been made uh, why the chemo regimes came we know there are three randomized trial level 1 evidence but we don't practice because of no standardization of the complication morbidity mortality rates so this is one place you want asking for evidence we have evidence but not practice not many center practice so you, you all of you have known mori macman's paper uh, albert's paper armstrong paper which showed just by changing the route of the chemo in addition to a good surgery fantastic surgery you do you have a pfs 18 to 24 50 to 66 i think in ca ovary ever since paclitaxel cisplatin showed that benefit this is the second most important that happened uh, and then we never picked it up so i don't want to go behind that various reason is the limitation one is this will not compensate for a inadequate surgery you can't leave a big tumor and hope i'll now bathe it with chemo no absolutely not first thing second thing is retroperitoneal nodes is not taken it's a different ball game what's happening in the retroperitoneal disease people call that a sanctuary sites in ovary and we know even in stage 1 presumed ovary 30% would be the node metastasis if you do a systematic dissection and they become stage 3c and survival would drop down to 25% five year survival so where we stand so sanctuary sites need iv chemo also and second thing is to sustainably give chemo six doses and your medical oncology not bothering you when you are in ot you need to give a drug delivery system which tank of catheter failed miserably so you need to put a port and i'll show you what's happening with this and we all know first 6 months to 12 months quality of life per patient who take ip significantly drops down even though it becomes normal after one year and then the survival benefit starts coming if you see the gog 172 trial 40 times 40 nearly 40% of them 
catheter was the fault and they couldn't. 58% only completed all the prescribed six cycle. But there is a caveat for that. It's, it's always nice to see good things in the bad things. By the time people took two to three IP, they already had a benefit. So probably if you don't complete all six, no need to feel guilty. They already, f so this is something very, very important. And now once the modified dose happened, because people used to use 100 milligram per meter square, which was quite toxic. Now it's almost accepted 75 milligram per meter square, then 72% of them complete. This was a prospective uh, study which we did uh, over this year in 128 patient, all optimally cytoreduced patient. We uh, put a IP chemo port. Initially, about first 50, 60 patient, I used this dedicated uh, uh, IP chemo port that comes from BARD, and uh, I would not recommend you. Uh, this is a dedicated IP port BARD gives. 14.5 French, big, multiple serrated hole. But the more serration, the more chance of sheath getting blocked. It would be good to use a Groshong tip bivalve chemo board, what you use for normal vein inside. But the important thing is, you know, once you complete the surgery, no microscopic disease, put the port on the subcostal area, put it down in the abdomen, seven centimeter from the umbilical, take a double bursting inside. So when you instill two liters of warm saline and the chemo, it doesn't go back, and the medical oncologist access it. In our study, 86% of the patient completed the prescribed dose. These were the complications why the remaining couldn't take, because cisplatin was used, nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, Port related, we could bring down to only 14% abdominal pain, but they could tolerate and continue on. And 5% uh, of the patient, you instill, because by two weeks, you want to push your patient for chemo, and they instill two liters of saline into the tummy, and the vagina should hold. Then I switched over to closing the vagina double layer. So then we avoided these leaks, catheter block, backflow, infection, port site infection, or abdominal infection, we didn't have. Uh, this is what we had, uh, the update of seven years, and then we had a overall survey of 62, all stage three CCA ovary. Uh, 2009, Nirja, and uh, they had called me for a talk, and I made this first publication in Indian Journal of Medical Oncology, and then Lalit, whom everybody respects a lot, he told that he should not stop here. You he should actually analyze your paper and put it in international, and then we went on to analyze five years, and then we published this in EJC, and that was the data. Uh, then we never knew that's when this, we were hit by this HIPEC. So we don't know where it starts, uh, should we do, not do, uh, but I just thought the logical conclusion of doing this ultralateral surgery in IP would be this, because most of the time we say by second, third cycle, there is a loculation happening, chemo distribution doesn't happen, uh, and we don't know where we happen and complications of IP, so how about doing one dose of IP at the time of surgery in a single cavity? So that's the issue. We all know what heat does to malignant cells. There are two important issues. Malignant cells, when you are at 41 to 43, get destroyed. It inhibits RNA and DNA function, and then increase lysosomal activity and tumor cells get died just by heat. Now, when you add chemo to heat, it is not one plus one is not two, one plus one is four. So that's a potentiation action you have. The increased uptake of the malignant cell happens, altered cell metabolism, penetration is even more of the drug, Temperature dependent rise between 39 to 40. So you have two toxic things against combining at one time in the right time of surgery. There are various ways of doing HIPEC, open, closed, mixed, bidirectional. First two to three case I did closed, and I just closed on. For six months I didn't touch the HIPEC machine. We purchased a US FDA approved machine. Both my patients had disastrous complication in the closed technique. Finish the surgery, closed, put those silicon catheters. One was anesthetist wife, recurrent tumor, no cytoreduction done on the bowel, was not required. She came with 12 perforation in ileum in one line like a railroad. And I had to explore her, did a stoma, I didn't lose her. We managed to find, she's disease free alive. Second patient had a rectal leak and I had to do, both were close technique. Then I went back and reread, reread, and we analyzed the quality. There were hot spots which happens in the abdomen, we were not able to control in close technique. The machine shows in this quadrant there is little hot spot. But then because you close the abdomen, they're not able to do. We totally, my ethics board told to stop this work and we stopped and we packed the machine and uh, then we revisited. Then we switched over totally to semi-open or open Coliseum technique. After that, we don't have this complication. So even though all the studies say closed and open, there's no difference. Believe me, if you're starting, don't do closed technique. It would probably the last nail in your own coffin of ever hyper program you're going to do. So we are going to set up this technique and then we do a semi-open. We put this hopside membrane, we create a small hole in that, and then this is how a touchscreen Belmont machine looks, and then we put the drug, and then we used to do. 
Now we moved on to bidirectional. I told you IP and IV. This is a slide which will just show advantage, disadvantage. Remember, you read any trial, they say open, close, semi-open is same. Not my experience. I would recommend that take a middle path, as told in Canadian path. No open, no closed, semi-open. See, the advantage is like this. If you close the abdomen, there is something called priming. You have to reach a temperature above 41. It will happen very fast because you close the abdomen. But the negative point is hot spots cannot be controlled. You can't drain. Same part of the bowel might be in touch with the same catheters inside. When you have a hot spot, you can't change. Now in open, it takes 45 minutes to prime. You can't add the drug until you cross 41 degrees centigrade. It takes long time. But the advantage of that particular thing is you can move the catheters, you can rinse the abdomen, you can change your own hot spots, complications can be avoided. Second thing is in open, there are a lot of paper or the fumes of chemo, what happens? So you have to put uh, the vacuum evacuator. So there is a plus and minus of both, but then we uh, balanced out a semi-open technique, neither open nor closed, but I have an access of hand inside. If you are doing a cytoreduction and HIPEC program, this is something very important. You must always put a PCI index, peritoneal cartonometers index, uh, because your outcome, even though you may do a fantastic surgery in HIPEC, the result may not be same in all the patients who has it. So it's nice to put this, please put, uh, read about it, what is PCI index. At the end of your surgery, your operating note should not just say you're done a cytoreduction. You must say you're done CC0, CC1, CC2, CC3. If it is anything more than CC1, there is no benefit. All the trials have shown that. So it is something very important that what is the CC score you put? Please put this score at the end of it. Second thing is, what is resectable, what is operable in oncology, both are different. It's very, very important. What can be done and what should be done is two different issue. Same way. There is no end for resection. Your patient is good, performance status is good, albumin is 3.5, you have a fantastic ICU and anesthesia, you keep on removing rectum, small bowel, spleen, liver, patient goes off neutral. So that may not be, resectability, operability may not be two issue. How do you know what to do? This is a very uh, good score. Please read about it, LRT score. You base the surgical complexity in the given patient based on this score. I really liked it and I don't know, we'll try to validate it. Just a pelvic surgery, omentum alone, lymph node, pelvic, rectosigmoid, diaphragm. Based on this, you have a score. Probably, we don't know more than eight, are they going to benefit? Uh, studies only has to tell uh, whether it happens. Uh, this is how there are a lot of high machines. This is a high machine we have. This is a touch screen machine. Uh, you can see that you put this special, uh, some suction one, and these blue things are the diodes. Six diodes, five to six diodes are put in various quadrants of the abdomen, which on real time will tell you what is the temperature that is happening in all the part of the abdomen. So you always know that you should not cross. See, this is something because I'll tell you why this is very, very important. So this catheter come use and throw. So I do a semi-open, I told you, this is a Coliseum technique. So you go back and put that and then there's a touch screen machine. So these are the temperature probes. Uh, you have an addition of one more probe if you want to put it anywhere. And then these are special gloves which comes with the HIPEC because you, there is a hazard thing which you have to manage. And I told you we put this membrane and uh, which is off-site and then we create a small hole and we have an AND access and then we prime the machine quite fast with this, 30 minutes. This is a touch screen machine, this is being primed. If, if you are doing, uh, you know, pseudomyxoma peritoni and if your chemo is not cisplatin, then only you use D5, otherwise we use a dilatase fluid. So both of the fluid. These are the special gloves, double which go down up to this and then you keep seeing the machine. If the temperature is high, you just move the catheter or you just rinse it and you change the left side, right side and then you just go back and then do that. Why this is important? You can't do with a normal hot water pouring in. The moment you cross 43 degrees centigrade, the chemo becomes ineffective. Chemotherapy is destroyed, so forget the benefit. The moment you cross 43 degree, bowel perforation increase. If you are less than 41 degree, you don't have a therapeutic benefit of HIPEX. So 41 to 43 is what you play around, so you really need a good machine. A lot of study, you know that there is no randomized trial, three randomized trials are happening. They all showed that in case of CAO, if you do a good site reduction and high peg, there is a significant survival benefit. And then 86 months survival, actually, you know, you can just see uh, the William Helms and Bristow's paper. This is what they showed, but there is a caveat. Site reduction not done completely into CC1 or below, high peg done. Site reduction done to optimal, no high peg done. Site reduction to high peg. See this. You are done high peg but you are not done ACC one and below, no benefit whatsoever. No benefit whatsoever, at the end of it, there is no benefit in that. 
and this is cytorotection reduction and this is what hypec added so the message is you can't do hypec if you're not done a good we all know that this hypernode trial in a new adjuvant chemo followed by hypec cytorotection reduction showed 68.6 which is unheard of but nothing comes easily in this world remember this is something which should be done in a very 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 strict protocolized initially French study, the largest study, showed 4% mortality, 34% morbidity. Australian study also showed this much. And then this was our study, uh, which we had in 32 cases of CA ovary, a prospective study. And then we had even like very elderly patient up to 70, 72. This was my patient spectrum. We do a very advanced cytoreduction reduction, upper abdomen to class three levels. And even when we have small nodules, we use CUSA. I am a great user of the CUSA to go down and then take out all these nodules because I know CC0 is better than CC1. Uh, even though there is no role of systematic parietic lymph node dissection, only the recommendation is removing bulky node. If there is no microscopic, we do this. And then the type of uh, resection we uh, do is we totally do extra peritoneal total peritonectomy. We don't make an access into the peritoneal cavity. You can see this is uh, the disease everywhere in the abdomen, uh, stuck diaphragm nodules inside and outside. Uh, we normally don't make an entry into the peritoneal cavity. Uh, we just cut the sheath. Uh, use a combination of ballpoint cautery, very high, we keep it at 100, and then we use a saline over that, and then combination of single swap, double swap technique, we strip the whole peritoneum like a sac. So it comes out completely like a sac, so you go on the left side into the paracolic, see the psoas, you go down into the pelvis, see the round ligament extra peritoneally, see the external iliac vein, you can see that, this is the bladder, you are in the preperitoneal area, so the whole abdomen is sac, we have not made an entry, we already stripped the whole peritoneal cavity, then we go down in the flank, so you would see the inferior epigastric, guard them, go down with the ballpoint quadrate down there. So which means all the structure we try to see intraperitoneally are seen outside. The ureter, the iliac vessels, and then the nodes are all seen outside before we open the abdomen. So the whole thing has been sacked like a parachute. So you have the whole peritoneal cavity, you have the string which is the momentum, and then you have the uterus and the pelvic structure with a pouch of Douglas at the end of it. I, I always call this a parachute area. Then. If the diaphragm has to be resected, you make an entry. The recommended entry is either in the diaphragm area or at the root of the mesentery on the left side. And you can see that this patient had a lot of diaphragm disease. Stripping and a combination of resection was required. This surgery was done live in our HIPEC workshop in front of uh, all the audience. And then uh, we go ahead and we just keep very low threshold if diaphragm has to be resected. It's just we treat it like any other peritoneal cavity. You just put a red rubber catheter, close the uh, abdomen, and then suck out the fluid and then just come out of it, no need to put an intercostal drain quite often. And I told you our protocol is, if I have done a no microscopic disease, we do a systematic parietic lymph node dissection. Even though it is debatable, there is no, the prospective randomized trial showed only PFS benefit is there, no overall survival. But uh, we, we definitely go. We have found in our paper, patient when CA1, when we start rising, we don't like it, patient goes around the town and get a PET scan. Most of the time the hot uptake is parietic. No need to treat asymptomatic, but the Patients, so we, we always do if there is no microscopic disease in the parietic area. Uh, we just go behind the venic cava and intraiotic cable, work between the lumbar vessels and then uh, the anterior spinal artery, and then we just go around and take off the entire thing. Once we do that, you can see that the whole abdomen, the peritoneal cavity, the uterus, the momentum, entire thing comes like a sac in one sac. If you are doing a bowel resection, you should not restore the bowel continuity if you are doing a high pec. Because the reason is high pec causes edema changes. So you have done an anastomosis, you do a high pec, they all open up. So we transect all of them with stapler, leave it to get bathed in the heated chemotherapy and the anastomotic restoration would actually happen at the end of the whole thing. Uh, you know, in the open technique, people say the fumes are coming and you cannot handle it. Uh, all the, uh, this is one of my resident whose dissertation it is. He brought this out, which is a wooden one. So he uses it to cook it like a Chinese noodle, all the intestine, the content, so you are not touching the chemo, but you have the benefit of this, both of them. So this was our data. Uh, I, we did three closed, and I closed. And we achieved good temperature in most of the patient. When you do high pec, my first two patients closed, see when they went home. We didn't have mortality, I almost lost it, because I did a closed technique, two leaks, six, 40 days. Then we stopped, then we learned, now average my patient go home by two weeks in spite of the bowel resection or a very bad high pec. But we one thing found the GA restoration really takes about four to six. They are not ready for oral. And these were the adverse event we have. I told you about this gastric out obstruction. Both of these are all in those two patients who had up front. Subsequently, our morbidity is very minimal. We are not lost a patient. 
in recurrent ca ovary at the end of 24 months we had two peritoneal failures and the same patients also had a solid failure and one pulmonary embolism at the end of third chemo all other patients are biochemically also not failed at the end of 44 so i just want to end uh, with this hypec is recommended currently in this primary ovary it is not a level 1 evidence it's coming up recurrent ovary is where we do but these are the we have to wait for these three trials Chiopar trial and the host trial in Netherlands, which will tell. This is a thought provoking slides. You know, if you see the prognostic factor, various reasons, young, good performance status. Nobody wants to have cancer when you are young. Who wants to die young? Not in our hand. Good performance. Everybody wants to have a good nutrition, not with us. We say, okay, great. Tumor decides the great stage. Not in our hand in CA ovary, but there are only two things optimal site reduction, aggressive surgery performed by people who have gyne onco knowledge. These two can change. These two are in our hand. We should do that. This is the Mount Everest. This is my favorite slide. Amita helped me prepare this. Only good surgery, 36 months. Surgery with IV chemo, 50 months. Surgery with IP, we moved up to 66. Probably cytoreduction, high pec, and recommended bevacizumab have been advanced. We no longer speak of months. Probably we speak of five-year survival, which should be our goal point to achieve. Thank you. Excellent presentation, but uh, what is the duration of uh, surgery that takes you to do the entire extra per peritoneal? It depends upon, uh, I think it took about 45 to 50 minutes. We have done about four or five live surgeries. Extra peritoneal, uh, peritonectomy doesn't take much time. Uh, there are various techniques of doing it. One is just doing a peritonectomy or another is making a nick and putting a very needle outside the peritoneum, installing the gas and the gas dissects everything you can do. It doesn't take. In the live surgery for demonstration with the commentary, we have done about 45 to 50 minutes. And then the high-pec duration and then your... High-pec we always use for one and a half hour. With us 41 degree to 41.5 or 42, if it is epithelial, if it is pseudomyxoma because of ovary, then I go up to 43. Never cross 43, not less than 41. Duration is always 90 minutes. What is your experience with the cases who have received a new adjuvant chemotherapy? Uh, uh, see, uh, initially we did for uh, recurrent cases. And now we are running a program of doing it upfront. In my institute, primarily new adjuvant, we don't use the incidence of primary surgery is 92. But for some reason, performance status patient has received new adjuvant or later. We definitely do high in them. And we already have that hypernode trial which showed new adjuvant chemo and uh, interval site reduction with high also has a benefit. What's the temperature of the warm washes that we give, which is comfortable to the hand? And we say now it's not too hot. What's About 37.5 to 38, 39. Not more than that. That's 38. That doesn't. See, it is not about heat alone. Uh, temperature between 41 to 43. Above 43, mortality happens, perforation. So, and all the quadrants, not that one part. So that's why you need to have a dedicated machine with real time. There are three things in high uh, You must have 950 ml per minute rotation, circulation of the fluid, number one. That's, there are trials. If the uh, uh, you know, speed at which it moves is less than 950, there is no benefit, number one. Number two, pressure should be between 16 to 18 Pascal. Temperature should be 41 to 43. So it's a, it's a very quality control machine. So you can't do unless you have a dedicated high pick. Even though people say, I'll do with a heart lung machine, I don't think you can achieve that. Thank you. So we've done several high picks, and um, we've had three, four patients wherein they've been in the ICU setting for as long as 40, 45 days. First two patients yeah, yeah. I also had. But we changed over to semi open. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I do agree with you that you have to be, you have to choose your patient very judiciously. Performance so, status is very important. Because yeah. when there is no level one evidence, if we can't benefit a patient, we should not harm. Uh, it's very important to yeah. have that line. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Dr. Pandey from Max. Even we've started doing, we've done yes. about six. And what I want to know, do you always remove the peritoneum even if it is not involved? I because always, going extra peritoneum. I, I always do that in state three C. I always do when I'm doing HIPEC. I, I always believe that when you go in, there are a lot of small, small, small nodules. If we try to achieve CC0, we are at CC1. If we keep at CC1, probably we end up being CC2. And then HIPEC is something which can uh, be harmful to patient. When we go for that, uh, I really don't want to compromise on the cytoreductive score. And, and it, doesn't, it, it doesn't add much morbidity. It doesn't take too much of time. I'm OK with that. Because most of them would uh, develop pleural effusion. And do you routinely no, no, put no, in no. Uh, no, no, chest strains no, no, or not? No, no. Uh, we, we have a paper of 76 diaphragm resections in over the last 10 years. Uh, the chance of uh, chest tube requirement was not more than 4%. No, I, we don't have that. 